yesterday's coronavirus task force briefing, a reporter from the Hong Kong-based news outlet Phoenix TV made a statement praising the Chinese government and portraying them as coming to America's rescue. After her statement, Trump pressed her on who she was working for and if she was representing the Chinese government. She denied it, claiming that it was a private company. This predictably sent the left-wing media into hysterical convulsions and charges of racism. Thank you, Mr. President. Only last week, there were multiple pl uh, flights coming from China full of medical supplies. Yes. Companies like Huawei and Alibaba have been donating right. to the United States People like 1.5 well. million and 95 masks and also a lot of medical gloves and uh, much more medical supplies. So Sounds like a statement more than a question. Okay. Oh. I hope they're gonna honor the deal. We'll find with out. With China, are you cooperating with I don't China? Know. Uh, who are you working for, China? You I work know, for China or are you with a newspaper? Kong, who are you with? Hong Kong Phoenix TV. Who owns that, China? It's is it owned by China? Hong Kong. No, is it owned by the state? No, it's not. It's a private owned company. Okay, good, okay. Notice how she denies working for China. We'll get back to that. After Trump's exchange with this reporter, the Chinese apologist media lashed out. One reporter from PBS said this on Twitter. President Trump just asked a reporter from Phoenix TV, which is based in Hong Kong, repeatedly if she's working for China. She said she works for a private company in Hong Kong, that it is not owned by the state. A correspondent from CNN was a little bit more irate, saying, President Trump just asked an Asian reporter who asked a question about China if she is working for China. When she said she works for a Hong Kong newspaper, he asked if it's owned by China. No, she told him. The Huffington Post also whined about this exchange, but was lacking in all the details. We'll get right back to exposing this latest media con job, but first I have an important message for all my viewers. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact, making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. The question is, did any of these so-called reporters do any research before blasting off? Of course not. If they had, they would have learned that this Asian reporter does in fact work for a company that is Chinese government propaganda. According to the Washington Free Beacon, Phoenix TV was involved in the purchase of a Tijuana TV station and since has been identified as Chinese government propaganda by U.S. intelligence. From the article, according to government sources, signs that Phoenix is involved in the purchase of the radio station prompted the Trump administration last week to begin an investigation into the national security implications of the sale. Phoenix TV has been identified by U.S. intelligence agencies as a major overseas outlet used to spread propaganda and promote the policies of the communist government in Beijing. The Hong Kong television station also has close ties to Chinese intelligence services and the military. How completely insane is it that we have a CNN correspondent from a network constantly accusing Fox News of being state-run media and another who works for a government-funded outlet running cover for actual Chinese state propaganda. None of us should be surprised. It's become increasingly clear that these news organizations are either owned by the CCP or the CCP has some sort of dirt on these organizations. How else can you explain this tweet from NBC News? U.S. reports 1,264 coronavirus deaths and over 24 hours. Meanwhile, in China, where the pandemic broke out, not a single new coronavirus death was reported. What the hell? They're taking shots at their own country while actually helping the CCP to outright lie to the world. How does NBC know if there's been any deaths in China or not? Because China said that there wasn't? U.S. intelligence just confirmed that China was lying about the virus for months, which caused it to spread across the world. Great!
ground zero for this virus was Wuhan, a densely populated city of 11 million people. There's no way a country that's that densely populated has zero coronavirus deaths. NBC has officially become as trustworthy as the Chinese communist government. On top of that, we have NBC's Andrea Mitchell, who's been piggybacking off other MSNBC hosts who are trying to focus blame for the coronavirus spread on Republicans, conservatives, and Christians. Or in this case, anybody from a red state. President Trump dismissing the virus as a hoax initially. I'm not even gonna waste my time on that one. We all know it's a lie at this point. There were a number of people in red states early on who didn't heed the warnings to socially distance because they believed the president's false comments. Anytime I have to deal with Andrea Mitchell, and especially on this topic, I have to point out that she's had nothing but good things to say about other communist dictators. Now she's carrying water for the Chinese Communist Party and deflecting blame from them onto Republicans and red states. Strange that she doesn't apply these standards to Democrats and blue states. Aren't blue states the hardest hit in the country? Looking at this list, yeah, all the states with the highest rate of death are blue states. In New York, de Blasio and other officials told people not to worry and to get ready for, get this, Chinese New Year of all holidays. In February, Nancy Pelosi told her constituents to go visit Chinatown. Now she is stopping at uh, one of the little gift shops in Chinatown, if you can see her live now. She has been uh, talking to people along the way, a lot of business owners, a lot of community leaders here in Chinatown. We want to be vigilant about what it might be on the uh, uh, what is out there in other places. We want to be careful about how we deal with it, but we do want to uh, say to people, come to Chinatown. Nice social distancing, Nancy. As usual, the media only gives half the story, and now they're apparently doing it in service to the CCP. Where are all the charges of Chinese collusion? Where's the finger pointing at Democrats for being Chinese agents? Of course, there won't be any of that in the media because they are the ones colluding. They are the agents. At least we know now, a vote for the Democrat party is a vote for the CCP. That's all for this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's a great way to support this channel. If you enjoy my content and you want to support my mission, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.